general trends in terms of market performance a bit of a mixed bag do you think yeah look I mean we had a couple of strong markets in the likes of Egypt which we'll touch on just now Tunisia did quite well um, and then the likes of Zimbabwe and whatnot uh, suffered a bit you know coming under a bit of pressure so quite a mixed bag all right, let's talk about what happened in Egypt because we do know the country is coming uh, through this political transition and a market that was closed and all sorts of things in that respect, gaining 6.5% in US dollar terms. Correct. Well, firstly, obviously, that uh, we've been pleasantly surprised with the developments in Egypt. Uh, the market hasn't been as hurt as we expected when all the violence was going on and whatnot in the protests. Um, but the reason it did so well last week, uh, it was up about 6.5% in US dollar terms. Um, there's been or a, a law is going to be proposed, a draft bill has been put out that will absolve some of the investors uh, from criminal liabilities. This relates to some of the retail stocks and uh, construction stocks. So you saw your likes of Oris, Oriscom uh, Construction doing exceptionally well last week. Um, mm -hmm. And just uh, some investor sentiment, confidence returning to the market, which we're quite pleased about. Yeah. And uh, sorry to interrupt there. Um, there's also been said that uh, the U.S. is going to give about $1 billion worth of uh, right. debt relief to the country, as well as Saudi right. uh, giving about $4 billion worth of debt so relief. So that should present some sort exactly. of economic stabilization yeah, plan for Egypt. What about events in neighboring Tunisia? That index up 1.3%. Is it largely a story of uh, Qatar cement? Yeah, correct. I mean, the name was up about 14% last week, so it shot the lights out. Um, it was about 40% of total market activity. Um, there's, oh, it's, it's just a speculation, no bother him sell facts, so we'll wait and bait breath, see how, see how it goes. Okay, South Africa was up 1.5%. Now, we have seen quarter one results coming through in South Africa. To what extent do they play a role, or is it a story of the RAND all over again? Uh, obviously, I mean, the results play a role, uh, but it's, we've seen no major surprises in any of the names there. I think the RAND was definitely the driving factor behind the US dollar term strength in the South African market, as well as the Namibian markets. I mean, when you look at the JSC, it was down about 0.5% last week, and US dollar terms was up about 1.5%, similar to Namibia. Namibia's currency is pegged to the RAND. So you always see a trend with what happens in South Africa tends to happen in Namibia. Let's head over to West Africa now because I think a similar issue as we've seen in North Africa from political turmoil to economic reconstruction. The BRVM um, largely impacted by Ivorian stocks. It's gained 3.1% in US dollar terms. Now, this is an exchange that battled to gain traction even after the political impasse was ended and Bagbo was arrested. Um, we'd seen this boss move from Ivory Coast, Abidjan to Mali and we've seen a lot of companies nationalize it. You know, a lot of negative things have happened in the past. So how do you explain this particular figure? Well, this can purely be explained uh, with regards to the franc move. I mean, if uh, the market had closed about three or four hours later, the market would have ended in US dollar terms flat. If you look at in frank terms, it ended about 0.8% higher on the week. Um, but there were some good uh, movements in some of the names like uh, Sockgen, Celebra, Ecobank. So, you know, it looks, looks to be some positive sentiment returning to the market, but uh, low volumes there as well. So. Low volumes, I was going to uh, ask, you know, is it 3.1% because it's also starting off a low base given the fact that the market's been negatively impacted? Absolutely. I mean, just after the index and the market opened a couple of weeks ago, very thin volumes, there was a bit of nervousness around it, so it sold off. So you'd expect some, mm. some uh, dead cat bounce somewhere along the way there, yeah. Let's talk about the worst performing bosses going back to North Africa, Morocco down 3.5% in dollar terms. Is it weighed over by the Moroc Telecom? How big a counter is that and the Absolutely. Fair dividend? Absolutely. It's about 24% of uh, to total market value is Moroc Telecom. Paid a dividend of about 10.5 uh, Durham last Friday, went ex dividend. So right. it's not a true reflection of total market activity and the movement in the market. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so unfortunately, it, you know, you look at it and it looks quite uh, disastrous, but take that uh, ex dividend out, it looks uh, perfectly fine, actually. All right, moving further south, Zambia's declined 2.2% in dollar terms. Also two major counters there having an impact, Zambief and Stan Chartered. Correct. Uh, Stan Chartered was more just uh, one or two big sellers came into the market, sort of supply demand issue there. And uh, with Zambief, they are actually uh, having a rights issue in the next couple of weeks. And as you know, shareholders do not like rights issues because obviously it dilutes shareholder value. They're looking to raise about 55 million US dollars. So um, yeah, just some negative sentiment with regards to that rights issue. Okay, next door in Zimbabwe, the mining index down 2.2%. The industrial index index 1.9%. Now, every time we talk Zimbabwe, we talk about jitters and indigenization. Um, have investors just not gotten their heads around this particular policy proposal? Look, 
I think so, yes. I mean, you would be nervous when certain people run their mouth about uh, certain things that are going to happen. But uh, it was made mainly just one uh, driver in the market that pushed the mining index down, which was uh, Rio Tinto Zim. I mean, right. it closed about five cents lower in the week. So we didn't see any major indigenization news last week. So I think it was just you know, one major seller coming to the market. And with regards to the industrials, a couple of the big names, they're also coming mm -hmm. under pressure, the likes of Econet, Dairy Board, etc., etc. What's going on over in Mauritius? Mauritius, well, uh, as you know, last week, Monday, it, uh, the all share reached an all-time high of about 2,113. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was on the back of better than expected results, better than expected Q1 results. So we were bound to see some profit taking somewhere along the line. Mm -hmm. Nothing that surprised us there. There was no major negative news out in the country. Mm -hmm. um, nothing to be concerned about at this point. We know, seriously aren't putting our hair out. Um, just we'll see how it goes. Definitely just profit taking story. All right, Kenya's NSC relatively flat, but we did see a major uh, component of the stock exchange, which is Safaricom, coming up with their results. Um, not really worse than expected, but investors were not expecting those results to be exciting. What bearing has that had on the market? Well, as you saw, Kenya closed about 0.3% up the index, the NEC20 index. So there's no major stories out in Kenya. Firstly, the, the major story was uh, SAFCON results, and that didn't blow lights out, didn't blow any expectations, came in, didn't allow the expectations. You saw the name closing mm -hmm. flat on the week at about mm -hmm. uh, 385, um, and today looking at a 390. So it seems to have found a base there. Right. Which is interesting is that the revenues generated from uh, data and MPESA are definitely on the increase. Um, so that, that, that is one surprise in there. But uh, top line, nothing surprising to us in that. Okay. Name. Thanks so much for being here. Neil Barnard, trading uh, expert at Securities Africa. Thanks so much for just talking us through the bourses in Africa.